again. This is Steven once more. Um, I will uh, give you one more video and one more coverage for today. And this time I intend to talk about the uh, Eternian royal family. Specifically King Rander, Queen Marlena, um, Prince Adam and Princess Adora. And of course uh, Adam's sidekicks, Cringer and Orko. I consider that as a sort of a closest uh, members to the royal family. So anyway, let's get this show started and let's start talking about King Randor, the father of uh, uh, Adora and Prince Adam. So there he is, King Randor, in his royal garbs and the way he looked in the Filmation cartoon series. So he comes with a spear as a weapon. Now of course this spear is the spear that is supposed to be part of the King Randor, the vintage version, uh, that I will also show you because there is two versions of this figure. So here is the spear, but it was released with this version of Randor instead. <coughs> and he also came with a small chalice that has molded wine in it, but I gave that chalice to Skeletor. It kind of looks better on him. And besides, I don't like King Randor looking like an alcoholic anyway. He's supposed to rule uh, a kingdom and then he's getting loaded on wine. So, uh, anyway, he has articulation that's a bit impeded and limited in the legs due to the fact that he has this heavy uh, royal coat that goes uh, up to down the waist. But other than that, the articulation pretty much is the same uh, as in most of the other figures. And it would be a good articulation if it only wasn't for this uh, royal clothes of his that are kind of getting in the way. Uh, he has a removable head. And as I already stated, this is his look from the Filmation cartoon series, how he looked most of the time in the royal palace surrounding. Um, so yeah, now there is, however, another version of him that was released before the Filmation one. And that's this one, a sort of a battle-ready Randor. This is the same version that came out in the vintage line back in the 80s. Now, of course, the accessories that you see him with did not exist with the uh, vintage version. Vintage version only came with that spear that I already shown earlier with the Filmation Randor. This particular version of Randor comes with a sword. Uh, that is a sort of a unique design because it has uh, this huge medallion close to the handle and this insignia as well. Now his royal staff has the same as as the sword, uh, the same kind of it, the same kind of insignia. Okay, just a moment, please. Now, these early figures have a very tight grip on their hands, unlike the Dispara that I talked about in the previous video. So here is the staff, and as you can tell, this emblem shows up on the sword as well. And so there we go. It's the same thing. I'm not sure what it represents. Maybe it represents the coat of arms for the, Rand the House of Randor, or something along those lines. Now, King Randor is uh, interesting to mention that his father is also used to be a king, and his father was called Miro. And uh, Randor's origin story tells that uh, Queen Marlena, at least in the Filmation series, Queen Marlena landed as an astronaut from Earth on a mission, and she crash landed on Eternia and Randor saved her life, who was already a young king at that time. So he saved her life, they fell in love, and she decided to stay. She was unable to return to Earth, or simply was not willing to return to Earth. So she stayed on Eternia as a queen, and she gave birth to uh, Adam and Adora. They are considered twins. So I will show you here the uh, comparison shot of the two Randors. As you can tell, they're pretty much, uh, at least when it comes to their heads, they're pretty much the same character. 
and uh, this is just two different versions that I already stated. This one on the left did not show up in cartoon series, but he did show up in the comic books uh, from the 80s. Uh, that's how he looked, a sort of a more battle armor or a battle ready Randor. So that would be as far as the Randor goes. The next uh, person we talk about is Queen Marlena right here. So she came with two uh, royal weapons. She came with a sword and of course a scepter. A royal scepter, so here is the sword. She also came with uh, a set of astronaut clothes so that you can display her as an astronaut and then an extra head. So, and a weapon that came with that astronaut suit, which is a laser rifle. So, here is the staff, which it pretty much has the same insignia as Randor's or a coat of arms, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so you can pretty much take her apart, uh, including the head, and you practically attach the clothes of an astronaut, and then that's how you display it. And as you can tell, I actually display mine as a queen. I prefer it that way. I used to display her as an astronaut as well, but uh, I sort of prefer to display her as a queen only. So I keep all the extra pieces away, so that I don't lose them, there is so many of them. And, um, yeah, so she came with two options, either to display her as a queen or as an astronaut. She also came as a, with an accessory, which is Cringer, here. Cringer has a very little articulation, mostly in the tail here. The, the legs and the legs do not move at all, and the head has no movement either. So anyway, he is, as you can tell, uh, filmation accurate, which is a nice touch, and he's much smaller than Battle Cat, so which is also nice, so that at least you can really tell that he did transform from a small guy into a very big fighting cat. So yeah, he, uh, he goes very well with Adam, so here is Adam. You can tell the size-wise works well. So this was a nifty accessory for Queen Marlena to come with. Uh, what I was going to say is that Queen Marlena here also has articulation like most figures. Now the, the her dress is uh, very rubbery so it can be taken apart over here and then removed and her legs pretty much have normal articulation underneath but the dress itself of course do not, does not allow her to move much but when she's in her astronaut mode then yes she can move and do a split and all that sort of thing and the head this particular head is removable now of course some people complained how her face as a queen was painted and many were not impressed by honestly uh, don't see anything wrong with it it just depends on how you guys view it some people dislike the way the face was and the eyes specifically were painted. In my case, the one I have, she looks all right. I don't really see anything tremendously bad about her appearance. So, yeah, that would be Queen Marlena. And then let's just show her together with Randor here. So there we go, the two of them side by side. And, of course, let's show her with her son Adam and then let's also show her with a daughter a mother and daughter anyhow uh, next one to talk about is Prince Adam Prince Adam as you most of you know uh, he transforms into He-Man when he lifts his sword of power and say by the power of Grayskull so he becomes He-Man at a moment's notice. Without the power sword, he cannot transform. Um, this is pretty much his look exactly the way he looked in the Filmation Cartoon series and all the numerous comics from that time period. Uh, his look was changed dramatically in the 2000X He-Man Cartoon series. Prince Adam was much younger in that show 
and did not have clothes like these. He looked, in that show, he looked more like a young version of Luke Skywalker, kind of like that. But this is the classic look of Prince Adam. And he comes with a purple power sword. And he came together with one more character. So Adam was an accessory in this case, which is so funny, and the main character was Orko. So the two of them were packaged together. And there were two versions. There was uh, a regular version where Prince Adam in both versions, the exclusive and the regular, looks the same, but the Orko is different. So this particular Orko uh, came packaged in the regular version. He came with his magic uh, stuff. He came with a book of magic that cannot be opened. It's just molded as one piece. And he also came with a little plastic stand so that he can be attached so that he can float above ground. I usually display him without that stand because I think he's good enough like this. He does have articulation in the head so he can turn left and right. The head can be removed and he can move his arms and in the elbows he has articulation as well. Uh, aside from that, I can tell you that the exclusive or the variant version of Orko is the one that's different. The Prince Adam is the same in both packages. So here is the how the exclusive version of Orko looks like. He's translucent. What do I mean by that? He is an action feature practically. When you dunk him in uh, lukewarm water, he will become invisible, meaning the red color will disappear for a uh, minute or two, and then he will look like he's invisible, which is a very nifty feature. But I personally don't like to do it because I'm just afraid of uh, damaging Orko if I dunk him into too much of a hot water or so forth and so forth. So I just rather not do that. So I just display him as he is. So you can tell they're pretty much the same exact figure except one is made of translucent plastic and the other one is regular. Both of them came with pretty much the same things, the magic stuff, and both of them came with the magic book and the plastic stand on which to stand on. And of course, both of them had Prince Adam as an accessory, which is so funny because Prince Adam is bigger than these guys. So yeah, there you go. That's the two versions of Orko. And um, Orko, uh, let's go back to him for a minute. Orko is a character that's been uh, showing in all the versions of the Masters of the Universe, except the New Adventures, of course. But he did show up in the Filmation series and a uh, prominent part in Filmation series. And he also showed up a great deal in the 2000X cartoon series and in numerous comics about the Masters of the Universe. Uh, he is an inhabitant of a planet called Trolla that has a lot of uh, inhabitants that look like him. So there is males and females who look like Orko. And on his home in his home world, he was a powerful magician, or so he claims. But in Eternia, when he accidentally ended up through a portal and saved the young Prince Adam's life uh, in a tar swamp, he managed to lose his powerful stuff, and his magic was never the same after that. So he practically became a com comedic relief by causing chaos at the palace and always having his magic backfire. Even the simplest tricks he couldn't perform without chaos and showing from it. So... Uh, but it made him a lovable supporting character and he was always there and he's one of the few characters who knows Prince Adam's secret that he is really him um, aside from Orko there is also a few other ones who are aware of Adam's secret identity uh, such as sorcerers and men at arms and that's pretty much as far as it goes only the three of them know who he really is uh, Orko it has been known to blunder a lot and cause chaos in the adventures, but he always comes up uh, very supportive of his friends, and he's usually trying his best to help. Sometimes that help is uh, dubious due to the fact that his magic is not working well, but many times the magic will suddenly work for a few minutes and he will get things right, and on other occasions it will turn into a slapstick comedy, pretty much, and uh, yeah, so... He's quite a likable character. He does have an uncle who is a powerful wizard uh, 
who lives on Troll and comes to visit Orko every now and then, and his name is Montork. He's practically like an older version of Orko with the glasses and a, a little white beard. And Orko also has a girlfriend who is from Trolla, and she's practically a female Orko. And her name is Adrael, so he's been in love with her for a very long time. And of course the interesting thing is, uh, at least in the cartoon series, Orko was never shown how does he really look without his hat, how does it look underneath, which remained a mystery of a sort. Um, now, of course, Orko is also known never to remove his hat unless he's being very polite to somebody or unless he's uh, in the presence of Drell. Otherwise, he would never take the hat off. That's also known through one of the comics. So anyway, that's all about Orko. Uh, going back to Prince Adam, he is uh, obviously uh, transforming into him and the most powerful man in the universe and all that sort of jazz, but he's also known to have sometimes questioned his power and sometimes was a bit jealous or sick and tired of being he man. He wanted to be normal because as a Prince Adam he has to constantly guard his secret from his parents and from everybody else. and. Tila specifically usually considers him a, a coward because he always disappears when the trouble starts. But the reason why he disappears is because he transforms into He-Man and he's not letting anybody see that transformation. Due to the fear that if his enemies knew who he really was, all his friends and, and those who are closest to him, like his parents, would be in dire trouble. It's the same fear that many of the superheroes out there, like Spider-Man, a.k.a. Peter Parker and others have, that if their enemies would ever find out who they really are, that would cost them dearly. And Adam has that same fear, but sometimes he really wants to break it, break away from it all and just show to his parents that he's not a coward, which he really is not. He's only pretending in their pre presence that he's a coward, but in reality he's a very brave guy and he cares about the kingdom and all that, but due to the fact that and the responsibility of being him and he's simply not allowed to show them what he's really capable of so he has to play uh, uh, he has to sort of play a village idiot all the time uh, in order to protect those who are closest to him uh, but as him and he always throws his, shows his true worth of that he can fight that he can be kind and so forth and so forth so uh, sometimes people who obviously people are not aware that he's He-Man, so they all actually, including Tila, develop liking toward He-Man, but they ridicule Adam because he's not so brave and courageous like He-Man and so forth, and practically that's what sometimes gets to Adam, that annoying fact that the people don't know the true him, who he really is, that he's the one behind He-Man and so forth. And it's so funny that nobody can tell that he is human because the head is exactly the same and the hairstyle and the structure of the body and the height. So with the, uh, it seems like everybody in Eternia is completely clueless that, that he is actually human, which is so silly because it's painfully obvious that he is. But okay, for the sake of the story, we all pretend that we don't know. Or at least the viewers seem to know, but the people of Eternia don't. So that would be as far as uh, Adam goes. And then the final character to talk about would be Princess Adora. She was kidnapped according to the Filmation story, or, or Filmation origin story. She was kidnapped by young Hordak and Skeletor who, gra uh, who practically planned to grab her together with her brother, but they only managed to escape with her. Skeletor was actually captured, but Hordak managed to escape with baby Adora and raise her as her own and brainwash her so that she serves in the Horde Empire. So she was in a way like an adopted daughter to him. She became captain of the for uh, captain force Adora of the Horde until He-Man, a.k.a. Prince Adam, found her and bestowed upon her her rightful sword, the sword of power that's pretty much the same like He-Man's, and the only difference is it has a medallion on it, or a crystal, whatever you want to call it. And that sword and the presence of sorceress in that sword revealed to her who she really is. And her brainwashing was removed, 
and she practically transformed for the very first time into Shira. And she saved her brother, who at that time was in trouble, and she decided to fight Horde in that same world where she's been living on uh, since she was kidnapped, which is Eteria, which is sort of like a, a twin sister land of Eternia in another dimension. Uh, so Adora remained there as the leader of the rebellion against the Hordak and the Horde Empire because she knew Horde very well, thought she was a pretty useful member of the, of the rebellion. Her, uh, her figure also came with this little laser gun, which is practically part of her outfit for uh, uh, being a, a force captain. And she comes with this removable belt here. And her attire looks exactly the same like she appeared in the Filmation cartoon series, but she also resembles Adam greatly because her outfit is pretty much the same like that of Adam. The only problem with the figure, which happens in several figures, not just the Dora here, is that their ankles can be extremely loose. If not both of them, then one of them. In this case, it's the right one. It's so loose that it can easily snap off. And that has been an ever-pleasant problem with several early figures, including Adora here. So if you guys notice this on your figures, you should try and fix it, or at least tighten the ankle somehow. In my case, I don't fiddle with the tools, so I don't really know how to tighten it that way. But I used, again, one of those rubber bands that come with the figure, and I tightened her ankle the best I could, so that it doesn't snap on me. But it's an annoying fact that that's a practically a lack of quality control, and it's a quality control issue. But uh, if you guys can fix it, then you don't really have uh, a problem. Then it should be just fine. And the head can be removed. And she has the usual articulation, like all the other female figures. She can move in the legs and the arms and in the ankles and knees and so forth and so forth. She can also do a split or semi-split at least. And uh, I'll give you a look of Adora here together with her brother Adam. So there you go. And uh, that's about it. That's my uh, coverage of the Eternian royal family and some of their closest uh, members in the sense of king and queen and the prince and princess and of course the uh, orko and cringer who are pretty much family in the eyes of the royalty so that's about it as far as this topic goes um, next time i'll just try and cover some more of the heroic warriors that i didn't talk about before so i do appreciate you guys watching this video and uh, catch you guys next time thanks bye